Now, before you go out and buy yourself a new bag for the summer, try out this easy to make and trendy macrame boho crossbody bag. here and welcome to Boshinat Macrame, the channel where we celebrate the art of crafting and fashion with fibers and knots. In today's tutorial, we will be going over how to make a crossbody boho macrame bag. Now the finished size of this bag is pretty small. It really fits your phone and a few other smaller items. So it's more like a phone bag. You can easily make this bag bigger if you want to by adding more cords to the pattern in the beginning. If you do decide to add cords, I do recommend adding them in groups of two cords because two cords folded in half gives you four cord ends, which is enough to make a full square knot. Whether you are a beginner or a skilled macrame artist, this is a fun project to make. If if you are a beginner, we do have some beginner friendly resources available on bochinot.com. Some of them include a 2 for 1 cord deal, 50 knots and cents ebook, along with various macrame tips and tricks and tutorials in our blog posts. Hand making your own bag instead of buying one not only gives you a more unique, one of a kind product, but it can really show how crafty you are as well. And with all of that said, let's get right into it. You will need a few materials and supplies for this pattern. I've used five millimeter macrame cord for the majority of the pattern and three millimeter macrame cord for some embellishing at the end. The cord that I'll be using is a five millimeter single strand cord from our Lush cord line. And this is our Giza cord in sage color. Egyptian Giza cotton is a super fine material, which means it is super soft to work with and also has a natural shine to it. If you're looking for a premium macrame cord, Giza cotton would be it. I'll also be using a gold metallic single strand cord in three millimeter in size to make some embellishments at the end of the pattern. You will also need some lobster clasps to make the bag straps and also the tassel. And as for other tools you may need, you'll need a small dowel to mount your cords onto and a crochet hook. So you will need a small dowel to mount your cords onto initially to start the pattern. It is definitely easier to have a stick or a dowel like this to work from to start off this bag pattern. To begin, we're going to take all 16 strands of 190 centimeter long cords and we're going to attach it onto the dowel using Lark's head knots. If you want to make a bigger pattern, this is the part where you add more cords. Skipping about an inch and a half downwards to two inches, we're going to make a square knot, starting on the left side with the far left four cords. If you are using a skinnier dowel than I am using here, then I would definitely leave about two inches of space, but if you are using a thick dowel, then one inch of space should be sufficient. Continue this row square knots, four cords at a time, all the way to the right side. Now underneath, make a row of alternating square knots. So starting on the left side, underneath the left two square knots, take the middle four cords there and make an alternating square knot. Then continue four cords at a time all the way to the right side. Thank you. 
Now we're going to repeat our first row of square knots from left to right, and you're going to continue repeating these alternating square knot rows for a total of 21 rows. So we are starting our third row right now, and so after that, we're going to make 18 more rows for a total of 21 rows. Once we're done, we're going to slide the dowel out of the lark's head knots up above. And you should now have the loops up at the top and some fringe at the bottom. This forms the back side of the bag pattern along with the front flap. And now we're going to work on the sides of the bag pattern. We're now going to work with our 120 centimeter long cords. We're going to take two of those cords, fold it in half, place them together side by side, and then we're going to use the outer left and right cord ends to make a square knot. Repeat with another two 120 centimeter long cords so that you have two square knot patterns. Now, to connect these two square knot patterns, we're going to place them side by side, and then we're going to take the middle four cords underneath and make an alternating square knot. Once this is done, you'll have a larger pattern connecting the two sides together. Now what we're going to do is we're going to continue making consecutive rows of square knots. So starting with the far left four chords, make a square knot, then make a square knot with the right four chords. And then we're going to continue alternating one square knot in the middle and then two square knots after that for a total of 11 rows of square knots, including the row up at the top. So after we're done with this, row, we've completed our third row of square knots. So now we're just going to make eight more. So one side of the bag pattern is now complete. We're going to repeat the exact same thing with four more strands of cord. We're now going to put these to the side and we're going to work on the front inner part of the bag pattern. To do this, we're also going to use 120 centimeter long cords, two at a time to make those square knots up at the top. And then once we have two of them made, we're going to connect them with a square knot in the middle, underneath again. The only difference between this and the side patterns is instead of continuing on with the rows of square knots below at this point, we're going to continue adding square knot columns to the sides. So as you see, I have a third square knot here that I'm connecting to the side with another alternating square knot. Continue adding on square knot columns to the sides until we have a total of eight square knot columns. 
Now continue adding on alternating square knot rows below until we have a total of 11 rows. So we have two here, we're going to add nine more rows. And now all four sides of the bag pattern are complete. We're now going to start putting them together. Starting with the back pattern, we're going to take those loops at the top and we're going to cut them in the middle. Once we're done cutting the loops, you should see the shorter cord ends at the top, longer cord ends at the bottom. Then we're going to take our small rectangular piece and put it on top, matching the rows at the bottom, and then place the sides on the left and right sides, matching the rows at the bottom as well. We're going to start by sealing the front side of the pattern first with the sides. So to do that, we'll need a 60 centimeter strand of cord to weave through the sides and then also a crochet hook to make this part easier. The loops should be big enough that you can use your hands if you don't have a crochet hook. Start weaving the 60 centimeter long cord through one side of the side pattern up at the top and then take the other end of the cord and do the same with the front rectangle pattern. Then match both ends up to make sure that they are even and then we're going to crisscross these cords and weave them through the next hole down on both the side pattern and the front pattern. Continue the weaving all the way downwards. Once we get all the way to the bottom, we're going to take these two cord ends and make a double half inch knot. Now repeat this exact same pattern on the other side. Now that the front and the sides are attached together, we can now attach this pattern to the back side using another 60 centimeter long cord, weave through the back, left, and right sides using the same method. So once all the sides are attached together, we're going to turn the pattern inside out, and now we're going to seal the bottom cords. Start by separating out the cords on the sides, the cords on the front, and the cords on the back. All of the cord ends from the weaving will be separated together with the cords on the sides. Starting on one side of the pattern, all of the side cords, including the weaving cords, are going to be anchor cords for a row of square knots. Starting with the first two cords on the front and back sides, these are going to form working cords and we're going to make a large square knot.
pull on the anchor cords underneath to make sure there are no scrunched up cords up at the top. Then separating out the working cords we just used, take the next two cords down on both sides and make another square knot underneath. Now make four more square knots using the same pattern underneath. Once we have made a total of six square knots on one end, we're going to start on the other end and we'll repeat the same thing with another six square knots. This time we're going to make an opposite square knot so that they are aligned when you look at the bottom. We made several left facing square knots on the other side. This time we're going to make right facing square knots. So switching the way you start the square knot, we're going to pull the cord over on the right side and then complete the rest of the square knot here. Once done, you will see that the loop on the side is on the right side for a right facing square knot. And then once you compare it to the square knots on the other side, they are going the same way. So continue two cords at a time on both sides underneath for a few more right facing square knots, a total of six right facing square knots. So now that we have six square knots made on both sides, what we're going to do with the anchor cords is we're going to cut off half of the group of the anchor cords on both sides. So cutting half off on the left side and then cutting half of the cords off on the other side. Try and leave the longer cords left over. So what we're going to do now is we're going to crisscross the anchor cords and then we're going to use the remaining working cords left on the front and back sides of the pattern to finish off the square knots. Push the cords up or down to make sure that they are nice and snug up against each other to create room to make a few more square knots with the remaining cords. So 
So once we are done with the square knots, pull on those anchor cords to tighten the knots. And then once it's nice and tight, we can cut off the excess cords from the anchor cord group. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take your longest scrap cord that you had just snipped off. There should be a strand of cord at, at about 30 to 40 centimeters long. We're going to use that as an anchor cord for a row of double half hitch knots here. So we're going to take one side of the fringe at the bottom of the bag and starting on one side with the anchor cord placed on top we're going to start a row of double half hitch knots. Now continue this all the way to the right side. Once the pattern is done on one side, we're going to do the same on the other side with another long scrap cord. Now to seal the sides together, we're going to take the anchor cord ends on both sides and make one last double half hitch knot. Once done, this is what the pattern should look like. And now we can cut off all of the excess cords from the bottom. Leave about a half inch to an inch of fringe at the bottom, but you can definitely cut off the majority of the fringe here. Once done, we can turn the pattern inside out again and the bag pattern is now almost complete. We're now going to add cute little tassels at the front flap of the bag. And to do this, we're going to use 15 centimeter strands of three millimeter metallics cord. You can use any color or type of cord for this. To add a bit of shimmer, I'm going to be using metallic cord. So using a 15 centimeter strand of metallic cord, we're going to gather one section underneath the square knot on the front flap and we're going to make a gathering knot. So make a loop with one end of the working cord, then take the long end and wrap it around several times. Then take the cord end through the loop we made in the beginning and pull on the top end to tighten then cut off the excess cord ends. Now repeat these gathering knots under each of the remaining sections of square knots. Now you can trim off the tassels on the front flap to your desired length and comb them through if you'd like.
And now the bag portion in itself is complete. To make the bag strap, what we're going to do is start with one lobster clasp, then take one strand of cord at 650 centimeters long and measure up until 150 centimeters. Then we're going to fold at that point and then we're going to attach it onto the lobster clasp with a large tie knot. Then take a second strand of 650 centimeter long cord, also fold it up into the 150 centimeter cord end, and then we're going to also attach that part onto the bottom of the lobster clasp with a lark's head knot. But ensure that the two shorter cord ends, so the 150 cord ends, are going to be in the center. So the one that I'm attaching here, it should be the cord end on the left, that's the shorter cord. So once done, you should have two longer ends on the outer left and right cords and then two shorter ends in the middle. Now taking a short scrap cord from your scrap cord pile, it should be around 20 to 25 centimeters, we're going to make a gathering knot right underneath the lark's head knots. Now pinning or taping the pattern back down, we're going to separate out the cords again so that the longer cords are still on the left and right sides, far left and right sides, and the two shorter cords are in the middle. And now all we're going to do is make consecutive square knots until we have a long enough strap. Your strap length may be different than my strap length. Continue measuring it as you get towards the end. 
to see if it is long enough or short enough to your preferences. So once you have a strap that's long enough, we're going to weave some of the cord ends into the second lobster clasp. So we're going to take one strand of cord and we're just going to attach it onto the bottom of the lobster clasp with a vertical lark's head knot. So weave it top down through the left side to the front. Then bring the cord bottom up on the right side and then through the loop on the front. Then pull on the cords and shift them to tighten. We're going to leave about an inch of space in between the lobster clasp and the last square knot made just because we're gonna finish off this pattern with a gathering knot. So take another strand of cord and repeat the same thing with another vertical lark set knot. So once both lark's head knots are made onto the bottom of the lobster clasp, we can take another scrap cord at about 25 to 30 centimeters long and finish off the pattern here with a gathering knot underneath the lark's head knots. You should have two excess cords that weren't used to attach onto the bottom of the lobster clasp. That's okay, just leave them as is. Once the gathering knot is done, we're going to cut off all of the excess cords. And now all we have to do now is cut off the excess cords. Now an optional pattern is to add a tassel to the side of the bag too. I do have a tassel pattern. I'll link it up here. If you wanna make a tassel for this bag, you can definitely go ahead and do that. And now that the straps are done, we can attach them to the sides of the bag. And you can also add magnetic bag clasps to the front flap of the bag to prevent it from always opening. The ones here are ones that you can sew onto the bag. If you guys are interested in any of the materials I use today, the cord, the metallics cord, the lobster class, or the magnetic bag class, I'll link all of that in the video description below. And there you have it, your very own handmade macrame crossbody bag. I really hope you enjoyed learning some new techniques and exploring your creativity with this tutorial. If you are interested in expanding your macrame skill set so that you can get from beginner to advanced level quicker, we do have some exclusive tutorials targeting specific macrame techniques and themes over on the Bochina Macrame community on Patreon. For the month of May, we are going over all things macrame fashion related. So we are going over macrame clothing, as well as some accessories like macrame handbags as well. If you guys are interested in learning some of these new techniques, such as how to add sleeves to your macrame tops, or how to make a bag that you can carry in multiple different ways, you can join us over there on the Bochina Macrame. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and make sure you guys click that subscribe button to stay tuned for more macrame tutorials just like this. And also drop me a comment below on what other macrame tutorials that you guys want to see more of. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. And there you have it.